This is a live demonstration of the second generation embedded multi-sensor. So right now this is the LCD screen. You have a bunch of different options here. The first option is the gas sensor. We'll explore that in just a bit. The second option is a CDS cell, the light sensing device on the embedded multi-sensor. The CDS cell is built in and just has a voltage divider connected to it. And it's right here on the front of the device, right on the area I like to call the array. And so if I go to the CDS cell and I, I have got my three buttons here for navigation, I can press the enter button and I'm going to my CDS cell. Um, we can see the values there, 977, 976, around that. If I put my hand in front of the sensor really close, the values will start to drop. If I cover up the sensor almost completely, then I can really bring those values down to almost nothing. Uh, 100 at the noise level. I can take my hand off of there, and I can actually add light and see those values go up. So that's the CDS cell. We also have a few other fun options. A4 and A3 are just two analog ports. They are connected to the headers on the front of the device at the array. And so I'm not really going to do anything with those right now. But you can hook up anything you want and just read the raw analog output of that device. So I'm going to go down to toggling the LED. This device can double as a flashlight, as most of the creations I've made can. And so this is actually a really nice feature. If you're ever in the dark, you need a flashlight, this device can act as one. So I'm going to hit that button and turn on that light. And it's a toggle. You hit it to turn it on, and you can hit it again to turn it off. And so I've just got some super bright LEDs. I'm going to turn it off now. So just turning those on and off. You can also turn on the backlight if you're if it's nighttime and you can't see the display really well. You can turn on that light and and get that display glowing. I turn that off. All right, that's the embedded multi-sensor in action. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the headers at the very front of the embedded multi-sensor. It's actually pretty simple. This is a gas sensor. This actually is a petroleum gas sensor. And I've put it on my own little circuit board I made and it's got a little circuit there designed so that it can it can interface with this. And some of the pins here are power, some of them are ground, there's some analog input pins as well. And right now all I need to do is I just need to make sure that this is the right way. This is our VCC, this top pin here our voltage um, and then down here is our ground so I'm just going to go ahead and plug it right in to here. Now one of the challenges I've found is that these little gas sensors use a lot of power and they also require quite a bit of time to heat up. So I'm going to set my sensor down and I'm going to go to the gas sensor option which is right here at the top All right, now, you can't see it very well, but what's happening is the gas sensor is heating up. The gas sensor needs to reach an ideal temperature before it can start reporting accurate data. So I'm just going to go, um, we're going to take a little break and wait for this sensor to heat up. So what we're seeing here is the raw output from the gas sensor, and we're we're getting some interesting values here. The gas sensor is heated up and I've, I've been noticing a, a trend. It goes from about 330 to about 350. And so that's, that's sort of a, just some noise in the data. And so what I could do if I wanted to is I could take the analog output from this gas sensor and I could convert it into a actual parts per million if I had calibrated and done all that work. But this is an effective way of using the gas sensor. One of the methods that I would like to implement is using this to measure the quality of gasoline fuel and to see which gas stations are throwing in too much ethanol into their, into their gas. 
But overall, I'd say this device works very well.